Debbie from So So Easy. Today we're going to have a look at how you can make a boxy corner in the bottom of a bag. So I've got a couple of examples here. This first one is an easy cosmetics bag and as you can see it's narrow at the top and wider with some volume at the bottom with a boxed corner. This one is shaped more like a triangle but the way we're going to make this one it would be exactly the same as any of the others. And there's also this example in a purse just here. This is my turning Japanese purse and also has boxed corners. Now the reason you do this on any of the bags is that if you didn't the bag would lie completely flat. So it would just be like this and there would be no shape or volume to it. But by adding the bottom into the bag like this you get some volume um, the bag's not completely flat and obviously it also gives it a nicer shape and um, will allow it to stand up like this one if your bag is stiff enough. So there are several ways that you can do this and we'll go through the first two. They may be ones that you're already familiar with and there's also another third way that I'll show you that might be new to you. So let's make a start. So I've got just a couple of pieces of scrap fabric and we're going to pretend that this is our bag. So the first thing to do, I'm going to place them right sides together and I'm going to stitch down the sides, along the bottom and up the other side. And we'll pretend this is the top of the bag and I'm going to leave this open. So once I've got my template ready, then we'll start boxing our first corner. So here's my bag example sewn and at the moment it's completely flat. So if we turned this out, it would be you know, a useful bag, but there's not much to it. So our first method is going to be to cut a square from the corners. Some patterns, if you use them, they may already have the square piece cut out, but if they don't, you can cut it yourself. Now let's say we want to have a three inch wide bottom on the back, something like this. We need to divide that by two, so three divided by two is one and a half, and therefore we need to cut out a square which is one and a half inches wide. However, we need to measure from the seam line. If we measure from the edge and we have a half inch seam, then we'll only actually be cutting out an inch so I'm going to measure from these seam lines and measure a square which is one and a half inches square. Now I've got my one and a half inch lines marked up I can just draw around with a pen. Same on this other corner I line up my one and a half inch lines with my seams I've already got and now I can cut out these squares. And now comes the part which is sometimes really difficult to show in photos. It's much easier to show in 3D on a video. If you pick your bag up, put your hand inside, you can open this part out. So instead of making it flat that way, I'm gonna make it flat the opposite way. So we'll put these two seam allowances together. This is my bottom seam, this is my side seam, and I want those to match exactly. So I'm gonna put the two of them together. And in fact, it helps if you push your seam allowances on one side that way, and on the other side to the other way, you can just in here, butt up those two joints. So now I can put a couple of pins just in here. I'll do the same on the other side of my bag, butt up my two seams, a couple of pins, and now I'll take this back to my sewing machine and I'm going to run a line of stitches all the way from one side to the other side. If you're following a pattern it will normally tell you how much but you only normally need a narrow seam so I'm going to do something about a quarter of an inch all the way from one side to the other on both sides of the bag. So my seam is now sewn across and I've done it on both sides and already you can see there's a much more boxy shape. So if I turn this out the right way now our bag should stand up on its own. It's got some bottom and some volume. Obviously it's a little bit out of proportion. We're just making a test. I push out these corners and we can see what it looks like. And there we are. Now this bot this bag has now got this bottom and this would be where you keep all of your supplies. And if we look 
closely at these sides because we matched up those seam allowances there's now one line of stitches that goes all the way from here up through this boxed part and up the side and it matches really nicely here and if you can get this nice finish it gives a nice professional look to your bag so that is method number one with the cutting out of the square corners now let's have a look at method number two so I've got my test piece ready for method number two and really it's almost exactly the same as the first one except we're going to skip a step and we're not going to cut out these corners. So this might be something you're already familiar with. Same as before, you put your hand inside the bag, find the bottom and the side seams and you're going to flatten the bag out the other way. So now we've also pressed our seam allowances so one goes to one side, one goes to the other and then I can feel in here with my fingers when the two of them are matched up together. So now I'll just put a couple of pins to hold that in place because I need to measure. So if I want a three inch bottom to my bag, now that I have this laid out nice and flat, I need to get my ruler. A bit of a cumbersome ruler, it's my own fault. Find where I get a three inch line across the bottom just here. And now if I draw my line with my pen, this will be my stitching line. And I can repeat that exactly the same on the other side. And now I'm going to stitch across this line and come back. So now my corners are both sewn and I'm just going to snip off the extra fabric. And this is basically exactly the same as we did before. We're cutting out, if you take a look, this same square of fabric from each corner but rather than drawing and sewing it and cutting it first we just sew first and basically miss out a step so if I turn this out our bag will be the same as it was before we've achieved the same re result we've just used a slightly different method now I find this one a little less accurate and sometimes I find that my seams don't match up as exactly let's take a look oh yes it's it's still good but um, the method where you cut out first, yes, that one's still good, can help you get um, a neater finish on these seams. So there we are. This is method number two. Exactly the same boxy bottom on the bag, but we didn't cut out the squares first. We sewed and then cut the ends off. So let's look now at method number three. So method number three is completely different and it's also going to give us a different look when we're finished. So we'll start off with our two, pace, two pieces wrong sides together. So the right side is facing out. And this could already have been sewn across the bottom. So if you have two pieces of fabric, you will have already sewn your bottom seam first. I'm just going to skip that for time. Um, so that will be our bottom seam. And then if you take the ruler, again we're going to use our three inch bottom. So I'm going to do... Oops, I'm going to do one and a half inches on either side. So I'm going to mark up with my one and a half inch line and then fold the fabric over, slide out my ruler, make sure it's square. And then I'm going to take this over to my ironing board and just press along this line to make sure that line stays in place. And then I'll be back. So I've given this a good press and now if I turn over, I want to do it exactly the same on the other side. So I'm going to turn up this other side until these edges at the bottom meet. Make sure everything is square. Those line up. I'm going to take this back and press again along this bottom part. So now it's pressed. The bottom of the bag effectively is here and it's sandwiched here folded under between our side seams. So now, assuming this is the, now the top of the bag, I'm going to sew my side seam from here and from here and it will catch this bottom at the same time that I sew. So let's see what that comes out like. So the side seams are now sewn and the bottom is sandwiched in here. So let's turn the bag out and see what it looks like. Okay, so this one, as you can see, is a completely different look. 
it still has the same effect if we put it on the side you can see it still gives the bag some volume and a, a boxiness in the bottom but the um, the ends of the bag look completely different because the bottom effectively is turned up and caught in the side seams so if you want something that looks a little bit more out the ordinary um, you want your bottom fabric to to curl up over here or you know have a slightly different look to your bag then that's method three and that might be something that you'd like to have a try at. So those are the three methods for boxing the bottom of your bag and I thank you very much for watching. I hope you'll drop over to So So Easy and have a look at some of my bag patterns.